All right, I'm excited for this. You guys excited? Feel good? Look good, feel good, baby. You look great, money man. Uh, so pay me in Bitcoin. Uh, obviously, what uh, Strike did with Russ uh, was a huge deal. Um, and I think it's going to turn into a revolution. I think it's a way bigger deal than people are giving it credit for. And I'm tremendously excited to talk with these guys about it. Um, so first, I'm going to let them introduce themselves. Uh, th this is a star-studded panel. If you guys had the luxury of giving these guys a Google, I think your eyes would pop. So we'll go left to right first. Gazi, if you want to just tell everyone your background and uh, how you're a Bitcoiner, man. Sure. Uh, my name is Ghazi Shami. I'm the CEO of Empire uh, Distribution Recordings Publishing. It's a pretty sizable record label based in San Francisco, California. Um, very much a product of my environment where there was a cross-section of technology and music and entertainment. And um, I built a pretty uh, formidable record label that I want to figure out how to pay people in Bitcoin, pay my artists in Bitcoin. And um, I've been spending a lot of time on that the past couple years, uh, doing a lot of research on blockchain and how to connect the dots, and here we are now. Thank You're you for having You're in the right place. Me. You're in the right place. Yeah. Money oh. man. I go by Money Man. Um, I'm a platinum recording artist. I was one of the first artists to pioneer um, cryptocurrency into rap, into the rap space. So for the last, I say, three or four years, I've been slowly integrating it into the hip hop community, trying to make people aware, give them awareness to invest in it things of that nature. I got multiple mixtapes. I do shows. I tour every year. So nice to meet everybody. Happy to have you, man. I'm Sean Culkin, going to my fifth year in the NFL. Um, have a passion for finance and just going down the rabbit hole like many of us here probably have with Bitcoin and also being orange pilled <laughs> by Russell Kuhn with the Chargers. I am an advocate for just Bitcoin as hope. I want to get paid in it. And I'm willing to share my thoughts with anybody who wants to hear them. All right. So looking at this panel and looking at you guys, the first thing that pops out to me is Bitcoin's a cultural phenomenon. I got a platinum recording artist. I got a CEO. Uh, I mean, Kazi's running a, a huge business over there. And then Sean is in the NFL. We're transcending culture. We're transcending industries. Um, so let's go start Sean and then work our way to the left. Why Bitcoin? And why get paid in it? What does that mean to you? Does it mean the same thing to all three of you? Is it different? Um, that's a big question. You guys are really independent individuals. Yeah, no, it's a huge question. Um, you know, I think a lot of people here have probably been athletes or played sports and something that we can all, you know, relate to. And, you know, I think, you know, what's, what's needed to make it to the top, right? It's a, you're, you're dedicating your whole life to perfecting your craft and developing a skill set to one day say, you made it to the top. And you know, I think about the entertainment industry or really any occupation that requires the first 20 plus years of your life to then only have a small probability to maybe monetize. And if you look at 2% of collegiate athletes will make it to the NFL. And then on that, your average career span is only two and a half years. So if I'm gonna sacrifice a fifth of my life's energy, then I gotta be really cognizant of what investment vehicle I'm using to preserve my wealth through my lifetime, but then also for my children. My, it's a generational play for me because what does it all mean? I'm not going to sacrifice and risk my health stepping out on the field, knowing the risk associated playing this game if I have nothing to show for it when I pass on my wealth to my kids. So that's, for me, I saw this, you know, Um, well, as far as, as far as that goes, I just like to look at things early and I could see that it was the future. It's the future of currency as far as, as what I believe. So around 2014, when I first heard about it, I started investing early. It was just a few hundred dollars and it went up and skyrocketed up. So a lot of times I get paid for features in Bitcoin, things of that nature. My fault, my fault. I'm good. <laughs> um, I'm but, great, I'm sorry. It's all good. <laughs> but yeah, a lot of times I get paid for features in Bitcoin. Yesterday, um, a person who I actually introduced to Bitcoin, who made millions off of it, came to me, offered to pay me in the feature in Bitcoin. So I just heard about it early. I believe in the future. So Gazi's my <clears throat> business partner. 
we break bread together, so maybe sometimes I'll get some money in the future in Bitcoin. <laughs> um, so from, from my perspective, uh, it was about the efficiency, the speed, the transparency. Um, traditional financial sector is a nine to five or nine to six sector, and the music business is a 24 seven operation. And I've always found it pretty absurd that uh, if I cut a record deal on Friday, I couldn't pay somebody till Monday via a wire or ACH transfer. And um, uh, we're also headed into a direction where we make thousands and thousands of micropayments every month uh, for side artist agreements, royalties, splits, you know, things of that nature. So it only felt natural to be able to move to a system that's transparent, you know, with blockchain, ledger, um, efficiency, speed. Uh, you could pay somebody on the other side of the globe in 30 seconds. Um, you know, I don't need to get their BIC number, their SWIFT number, their routing number, their account number, their address. Uh, it's it's um, obviously we're going to have some complications with like KYC and things of that nature, but I think those are all hurdles that we can overcome. Um, I think ultimately the peer-to-peer -peer, uh, nature of it and how fast you can get money to somebody is what's most important, and that's why I'm investing a lot of time and energy into it. I love it, man. I love it. Music's a, a global industry. People forget that. Hey, how come he got the mic? Well, <laughs> he's late, <laughs> but he's special, especially to me. So, ladies and gentlemen, Russell Kung. Yeah. Well, no, does he need an introduction? What's relevant to this panel is Russ called me, uh, man, what is it, almost probably a year ago close and said, hey man, the NFL won't let me get paid in Bitcoin. Um, I gotta get paid in Bitcoin, and you gotta help me. Uh, and we figured it out together. He's a legend in what he started. He, I think Sean hinted at is the reason Sean's on the stage now. Um, Russ, Ru Russ is, I, I, I'm gonna share by my words, I'm gonna let him introduce himself, but it's a pleasure to have you on here, man. Thank you. Can you guys hear me? Yeah, that's good. So I didn't get a chance to do the mic check. Uh, wow. Um, man, this is incredible. This is awesome. And you know, when I, when I think about getting into Bitcoin, I had graciously been able to work with uh, the strike team that happened. And a lot of people don't, they get excited about the price, right? And how Bitcoin goes up. But I think what gets missed there is, you know, I converted my salary around like $23,000, like a $23,000 uh, price point, right? And then months later, you know, the price of Bitcoin like skyrocketed. So I literally took dollars and moved into the best asset like in history, right? And as it skyrocketed, people were crazy excited, but here, here's what was the, the most impactful part for me was. Like, my wealth was changing, and I didn't take another shot to the head in order to have that happen. That's fucking Bitcoin, right? Less concussions, less wear and tear on my body. Bitcoin is changing people's lives all over the world. I have more time to spend with my son. I got a chance to teach my son how to swim. You know where, where I would have been? At freaking football practice. Like. Only one thing can do that. that. That's time preference, if you ever want to understand what that is. And that's, that's incredible. And that's a Thank you to the devs, the strike, the giant, all these guys up there. 100%. 100%. Um, so I think the coolest thing that we did with Russ, or, or my initial take on it was uh, Russ at the time operated as an independent business, and everyone on the stage does. An artist should act as an independent business. An athlete should act as an independent business because at any point, a record label could cut you, a team could cut you. The NFL is never going to pick up another phone call of these guys if they tear their ACL. They work their whole life, and I don't care what you do for a living, the average NFL career is three and a half years. That's not long enough of any career to sustain a family uh, and a generations to come and support a high quality of life that we all want. And so I'm curious your guys' thoughts on one, operating as an independent business as an athlete or in the music industry? Uh, and then two, do you find this as applicable to the everyday person who gets their paycheck 
from their boss who isn't risking their head and their brain trauma uh, to, to blindside block for Tom Brady? Um, and if so, why? And if not, why? Who do you want to do? I'll take Let's, it. <laughs> yeah, take Bitcoin's it. hope for everybody, for sure. It's, uh, it's for the less fortunate, it's for the middle class, and it's for the wealthy. And I'm passionate about that. Um, for me, it, it flipped, you know, when I started viewing myself as a corporation. And uh, we, I started seeing, okay, I need to do what every other corporation is doing in this economic environment. And that's viewing cash no longer as an asset, but as a liability and making my appropriate portfolio allocation adjustments. And... I think on just, you know, not too long ago, there was, a, you know, the broke, the 30 for 30, right? Where it's like 75% of athletes are broke three years out of the league. And I like to think that since then, we're trying to make change and go in the right direction, right? We're wanting to cut expenses, deploy our capital smartly. But March 2020, the world changed forever going forward. And the amount of players that I know that are being led from their financial advisors and money managers to hold cash, if you have a significant part of your wealth in cash, you, you're going to inevitably fit that statistic. And they're still trying to do the right thing. And I'm not okay with that. And I, and I believe it's just education. And like you said, too, the simplifying things to where, for me, I look at it like it's a 401k for a lot of guys, where it's like, man, you put one, two, three percent, whatever that allocation is away, and you long term, you're buying an asset that is becoming increasingly more scarce. The uh, uh, demand is increasing and it's pristine collateral that will never be diluted. And that's, my, that's, that's it, man. That's yep. Money Man, do you think that this is attractive to you as an artist or just as a human being that's knowledgeable and in the know? Are there certain things that are attractive for an artist? Like, Well, it's definitely attractive as an artist because you can get paid in real time. It has the technology to pay you in real time. As you stream a record, you can get paid right then as opposed to waiting a month, two months, or three months, or six months. Um, Also, as a human being, because it's just the future. I look to the future. I'm a futurist. I just know what's going to happen. It's going to explode. It shows a pattern. So it's just common sense to see that it's a pattern shown and it's going to explode or it's volatile. You can make some money off of it. What I do is I, I just invest in it and I let it sit, whether it goes up or down, because that's gonna be some financial security for the future for me. Yep, yep. So guys, you're, you're the boss. You're talking about paying people, not getting paid. So you're the man <laughs> on campus. So what's your take on this? Do you think because you manage artists who are kind of independent businesses in a sense, is that attractive or if you were running an ice cream shop, would you be as into it? Um, for me, it's, it's, you know, a lot of people are looking at it as an investment asset, almost like a stock that goes up and down. And that's great. And yeah, you can make a lot of money off of it, but I'm looking at it as a, as a shift in human behavior, right? Um, you know, we were, I was, I'm in the record business and I saw the record business go from CDs to downloads to streaming. Now it's a subscription streaming and it took a long time to change that user behavior and that consumption behavior. And um, as we uh, advance in, in, in this sector of business, in, in the crypto sector, uh, it's really just about changing the behavior of how people consume currency. Um, and when you look at, uh, because you know, in the traditional record business, it was most of these companies were domestic companies, weren't international company. Mm-hmm. So when I look at having to pay countries like Nigeria or Indonesia or pay into China or Southeast Asia and other areas and other territories in the world, I just look at this as mass globalization. The way we mass globalize music through streaming platforms like Spotify and YouTube, we're, we're going to be able to mass, uh, mass pay and mass globalize the, the concept of currency where I can touch somebody in any foreign territory and now maybe we're not dealing with things like inflation or they can't access their bank account or I'm trying to pay somebody recently and, and the country that they live in, PayPal, got blocked. Mm-hmm. Uh, I couldn't pay them via PayPal, I couldn't pay them via MoneyGram, and I couldn't pay them via Western Union. Yep. So uh, if you're an artist and I do business with you, how can I pay you? Better yet, if you're another business and I'm trying to do business with you, how can I do business with you if I can't pay you or I can't receive payments from you? So um, it's really just about uh, uh, changing the behavior of the way the world operates when it comes to uh, looking at, at currency. Yep, I love it. You should use Strike, man. It's a cool app. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it, man. I love it. 
Um, Russ, so some background. So Strike is coming out with a feature um, where you can use it as a vertical bank and you can get any percentage. You can set it in your settings and get your direct deposit paid in Bitcoin. I didn't come up with that. Uh, Russ came up with that. He gets all the credit for that. He's a visionary. And so I want to hear, you're a visionary, man, and I want to hear your thoughts on this. I think you pioneered this thought. Um, it's a mental model that's deployed and is now eating in its own world. Um, and so talk to us about where you were a year ago, where you are now. I, I would definitely say the, the biggest jump for me, and I think uh, an old philosopher said this by the name of Sean Carter, um, I'm not a businessman, I'm, like, I'm a business man, you know right? <laughs> that was, it's powerful because when you realize you're not investing into Bitcoin, like you're choosing to opt out, right? That's the decision you're making daily for those who are like dollar cost averaging from week to week. You're making that decision over and over again to say, like, I am truly gonna opt out of this system. I'm opting out of wage slavery and inflation, right? I'm saving time, like, that's the power of it, right? And I think anybody who decides to take on the asset, whether you're a, a, a person, a corporation, business, whatever, you truly become a financial services entity, right? That was the shift that happened for me. I went from thinking about investing into stocks, real estate, and all those types of things, right? And then it started to see myself as a business. So what assets do I need to have on my balance sheet? What ultimately gives me freedom to have full sovereignty like over my life, right? Like, how can I hire people? Like, you look at the white paper, a peer-to-peer -peer transaction system. That's crazy from all over the world. A global peer-to-peer -peer system, no intermediaries, nobody in between, just you, right? And I love betting on myself, any day. Yeah. So when I say pay me in, in Bitcoin, I'm dead serious, right? So that was a jump. Strike allowed me to do that, right? And uh, man, it's gonna be an incredible future. I can't wait for later on today. I don't know what's gonna happen, but it's gonna be crazy, I know that. Uh, I'm gonna rock this motherfucking stage later today, but that's a different <laughs> yeah, topic. No. That's a different topic. All right, gentlemen, we got two and a half minutes. All of you are looked up to by a lot of people. Um, let's do final sign off. What do you gotta say? to the audience and yeah. to all the people that follow you on the internet. Well, my, my closing thoughts are, does anyone here get so angry when people call Bitcoin a Ponzi? It pisses me off. It pisses me off. And if you're embarrassed against Bitcoin, you haven't done your research. And the whole, oh, you're expecting a greater fool to pay for a higher price. Well, one, I'm not selling you my Bitcoin. I'm not selling you my Bitcoin. And, and second, as we've talked about, just as athletes, viewing ourselves as a business, you know, okay, if the business failed, I tear my ACL, last year I blew my Achilles out. If I, I don't know when my next play could be my last. If I had to just survive and I had to liquidate, a mass liquidation, what would be the one asset that I would not sell you? I would give you fixed income, I would sell you my house, I would sell you equity, but you're gonna have to grab the fucking Bitcoin out of my hand, <laughs> all right? And I'm not gonna do it, so thank you. Falcon 22 on Twitter, by the way. Um, I'm a simple person, so I'm gonna keep mine short and sweet. I read a book one time that says, don't pass up a good opportunity. So take a percentage of your money and invest in, in Bitcoin. I heard that, I heard that. I'm gonna keep it pretty straightforward. I, I told my mother recently, there's gonna be a world of haves and have nots, those who don't have Bitcoin and those that do. So don't be a half not. <laughs> yes, it's, for me, it's, it's real simple. Um, for those of you who are working in the fiat job system, like myself, go to your employer Monday and tell him or her, look him straight in the face and say, yo, it's time. Pay me in Bitcoin. Hands down. Pay me in Bitcoin. Let's get it. I love it. All right, we got 25 seconds left. So we're going to give these guys a sand ovation. They're really fucking good at what they do, and they're Bitcoiners. They're talented guys. Yeah. Get up. Thank you, guys.